we on? I, are we are we live right now? We're doing it live. Sweet. Uh, I'm Chloe and Michelle. We're here with Brian Martell, Rob Cunningham, and E. Uh, so how are you guys enjoying Community Day so far? It's fantastic. You guys just did a panel. That was, yeah. a, that was a long panel. You guys survived, and now we you're survived. here. We survived. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> no we damage. Yeah. Oh yeah. So talk to us about Homeworld. I mean. How did you guys come together? I mean, this is kind of like the band getting back together in a way, right? Right. Yeah, I think for a lot of the, hopefully the fans out there, seeing uh, Rob and his guys at Blackbird helping us out and, and you know, on different elements of the game, like up, up the uh, the cinematics, uh, kind of lends a certain level of authenticity to what we're doing. And I think that's really exciting that we're able to get the original artists back on doing what they did, but doing it in a, in a way that's even, even bigger and better than what we could do 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, no, people, you were saying, even E, that you're like, as a fan of the game, that you can come back and play. Yeah, I, I'm old. I played it 14 years ago when it came out. It, I was a big fan. It's a big sci-fi, real-time strategy game that's right in my wheelhouse. But you can't buy the game today, so I can't put it on my new PCs. And the fact that I'm going to get to go do that again soon, that's pretty cool. And now in HD. Yes, in HD. Coming soon, <laughs> right? Soon. Soonish. We'll just well, leave it at that. Yeah. yeah. Rob, you were telling us a story about how you and Gearbox together got together. It was a really cool story. You want to talk about it? Yeah, sure. Um, we first started talking to Gearbox when they acquired the Homeworld IP from the THQ auction. Uh, so we were really excited that someone who was a qualified, in our opinion, a qualified buyer, which is a yeah, someone who's excited about the product, they're fans, they you know, have the resources to do something cool with it and it's not just gonna sit on a shelf. They were um, pretty qualified. I'd That's say true. they were pretty qualified. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you um, guys released a really nice press release talking about... It's congratulating yeah, you guys, yeah, we were very stoked on that. Um, and, uh, you reached out. Yeah, we reached out and I, I you know, tossed a couple of pictures from my personal archive which I you know, thought no one had seen but the fans were like, oh, we've okay. seen all those already and I was like, oh, okay, well, well have to look a little harder, but um. So when you guys saw that from his personal archive, did you guys just that blow your mind? Well, yeah, that I mean, we were excited to see what else he had, and so that was one of the nice things was through contact, uh, the the guys uh, that had worked on it from all over the world, basically that had split up from Relic or whatever, uh, came together and, and like sent different assets to us that we didn't have when we when we purchased the IP. So when we got all this stuff, I mean, we just went through all these just <laughs> reams and reams of, fo uh, of of images and concept art, and it was just. It was like, you know, we were like giddy because it was so exciting, yeah. Yeah, I hope there was nothing too, you know, personal. Uh, there's there. a few personal photos in there, yeah, really. Okay, yeah, we'll, I think we'll I'd like to see out. the personal yeah. archive. Yeah. Personal <laughs> um, yeah, so that was, uh, that was fun. And, um, and then, you know, because we were making ship breakers at the time, hardware ship breakers, it was so similar in style and, the, and you know, it was inspired by Homeworld and, you know, we're building it with the same team as Homeworld and in all respects, Kismet. was yeah it was yeah. it was it was fate and uh you know we so began the dialogue and and um they you know they were excited about what we were making and and said you know do you guys need help finishing this thing and we said yes actually that would be fantastic you know we could really use more financing to get this thing r where it really wants to be uh and they said well we're super stoked we've got homeworld we're going to do the homeworld hd thing we could use your help with that we you know we could we could help you with this it just it really was stars aligning and uh, a Cinderella story, so we're very excited. Does that mean you're Cinderella, or? I think that's Prince Brian Charming is Cinderella, <laughs> actually. I'm, I'm, I, I, I must be one of the man. sisters or something. Is that part of the personal photos? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the other thing that was really great about uh, sort of starting the relationship with, between the projects and being able to make sure that Homeworld Shipbreakers was to be able to, to uh, come out as a, a you know, big commercial release um, and not have to be free to play and, and, and kind of go down that rabbit hole. Uh, it, it kind of let these guys think a little bit differently about the product and kind of expand a lot more on what it could be and you know, really develop it into what is, in essence, a prequel for the rest of the Homeworld game. So it makes the whole franchise that much more rich because as you play through Shipbreakers, you're able to see and understand things that later as you're playing through Homeworld 1 and 2, it's like, oh, that's what this means. That's how that got started. Yeah. And it just, it kind of feeds through the whole legacy of the, of the, of the brand. And so so if it's gonna be a prequel, where does it fit in the timeline? Can we talk in detail Ooh, a little bit about it? Do we have exclusive um, information here? 
Yeah, okay, so without too many specifics, it, it fits in the timeline um, prior to the finding of the Kartoba. So in the story, it's the clans of, the Kith clans of Karak uh, and their adventures on a hostile, on the hostile desert planet and, and their um, expedition out into the desert. You excited about that, E? Yeah, I'm kind of running it through in my mind, and I'm trying to figure out where it ends. And I, I don't know if I, I, I don't know what you're going to want to tell us, but I, I can probably less is more right now. Yeah. I think you know. I, I can absolutely see though how shipbreakers could end, and that could be really kind of awesome. So we'll have to talk do more. What I'm thinking, yeah. yeah after the, okay. After we're off mic, let's talk. So, how much creative control is Gearbox going to have on this game? Well, one of the things that we're, we're really excited about is that we don't really need to. We've got right. such an amazing studio with Blackbird, who are obviously the caretakers of the franchise in many ways. So, I mean, these are the guys that were there making it originally. Why would we step in and get in the way of that? Um, so we're Respect. gonna. Respect. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's. <laughs> totally. I mean, these guys are passionate about it. They love it. They know it inside and out, and we don't need to be in the way of that, right? So making this game sort of modern for the modern audience, what are you thinking about pulling in to change the game up for the newer audiences? You mean for the HD versions? Yes. Um, do you want to answer that? Like, what did you guys... Yeah, I mean, I think a number of the things are, you know, when the game came out, one, they were on CD, right? So that meant that a lot of things that could have been even better and higher quality had to kind of be compressed and, and, and made smaller because they just couldn't fit, you know? Uh, so that's one thing. So that things like the, the videos that are in between, we're doing a lot of work on upresing those. So they were, I think, like 320, 700 by 320 or something. Yeah, yeah. So they were pixels. Really, really low res you know, videos of a lot of compression. So now they don't need to be. And we're able to um, you know, ha have them repainted and recomposited uh, and everything so that now they're, um, they're 1080p, so they're really gorgeous. That's one thing. Uh, all of the ships, you know, the, again, the textures were a lot smaller then, so we're able to do a lot of things to make those have, you know, much, you know, higher quality rendering. To and the audio too. Yeah, and then the audio. I mean, the audio is now getting a full pass. Um, over. It's kind of amazing yeah, exactly. to take a game. Uh, w w when was Homeworld? Uh, 1999. 99. Yep. yep. Yeah. So to be able to resurrect this and bring this to a new audience as well as satisfy gamers who loved it from before. That must be such a cool thing for you guys. It totally is. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, it totally is. I'm excited to play it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's cool because this game's sort of timeless, and I feel like a lot of games, something that games have over movies is that gameplay is always gameplay, you know, and, and I'm really excited to see what you guys are going to That's very cool, yeah. yeah that's I think true. that's spot on, exactly. One of the things that we're really excited about is that it still holds up after all these years, and it's still such an amazing cinematic experience. So. Well, yeah, I mean, Rob, you were saying in the car when we were driving here, when we first met him, he was like, <laughs> it's like we didn't know that, that people were going to be so excited about this again, and I mean, that must be thrilling. Yeah, we've been, we, we, we were just saying at the panel earlier, we've been literally overwhelmed with emails with, um, you know, curious new people and fans of the old titles, and yeah. they, they want to know everything. They're super excited, and you know, it's fun to get sort of the band back together, as it yeah, were. Yeah, the band, I like you know, that. And, and, uh, but make it fresh and new. So um, yeah, it's just really exciting in lots of ways. Is it nerve-wracking being like a smallish sort of independent company making this big game again? Uh, not really. I mean, it kind of because it's always nerve-wracking being in business. Right. But uh, it, but in terms of the content and the people you're making it with and the partnership that you have, it's it could you know there's this is not nerve-wracking compared to what you know I've experienced in the past. So right, right when it can you know, be I mean, just total chaos and now you uh, yeah I mean there's the, the whole spectrum chaos. from total <laughs> chaos to it's so set that you're bored out of your mind. Uh, you know, and you usually want it somewhere in the middle, um, you know, so it's great to be working with people you love and want to work with and, you know, to have a partnership that you're really excited about, so. One of the things that uh, people may not know about you, Rob, is uh, Eat Art that you were showing us. Uh, right, yeah. Oh, yeah. They've oh got, he, he has, he makes robots, like actual robots. Y yeah, so um, Eat Art is, a, is an art foundation. It's an art research lab we established in Vancouver in 2007. Uh, after I left Relic, but before starting Blackbird. Um, it stands for Energy Awareness Through Art, and it's 
really just a collective of um, engineers and artists. What was the name of the YouTube video so people can watch it? Because it, it was so uh, cool. The YouTube video is, is called Titan Boa Meets the Mondo Spider. It's Titan a video. Boa Meets Mondo Spider. Yeah, it's a video of two of our creations playing together in what's now the Blackbird Studio. So it it's is a so giant cool, warehouse. and we want to go. It's mind bending. It's really, really cool. They're just giant robots. I mean, the, the snake is a three ton uh, electromechanical snake. Um, it's like an exoskeleton, it, too, right? Yeah. And then the spider is a 1,600-pound hydraulic walking spider that you pilot in the middle. And we're building a four-legged mech now as well. So uh, it's actually featured in um, Popular Mechanics last week or the week before. The one with good drone, bad drone on the cover. John Tippett is uh, featured in there with his new creation, Prosthesis, which is absolutely barking mad. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> And you guys free missed a Burning Man, right? So yeah, they, they actually just got back from Burning Man this out. year. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. The, the fun, the fun pills. They we can, <laughs> and then they yeah. see this giant snake. It's so cool. We yeah, want to just come yeah. up to Vancouver in our pajamas and play. Definitely, definitely. Come up. We'll show you the. Uh, we'll show you them both. Show us the boa. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. She's gone another 20 minutes without I saying. I didn't say a curse word. No, it was true. So there good. was no curse words, but yeah. yeah. No, we're good. Yeah, it's, it's just a boa. It's no big deal. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> so uh, I think, is that, is that, is that all is that we're doing right now? I think so. I, think I, haven't, I, I hear a little bit in my ear. Sorry, guys. Sometimes no, the audio is a little. With our audio, so oh, I got, got it. Somebody's CIA talking to my ear here, and then three I here. Know. Yeah. I don't know if they're ready to throw to audio yet, but oh. do you want to go? Play with the boa too. Yes, I want to play with the boa <laughs> yeah. too. I'm sure Twitch is gonna love that. They're gonna be like, "Rawr, we're good." All right, so right now, guys, we're gonna wrap and we're gonna go to a video. So we'll be back in just a little bit. Thank you.